Hi, this is Charles with a video introduction using Vassal Engine and Rommel in the Desert module uh, from vassalengine.org. And um, I wanted to show you Rommel in the Desert by Columbia Games. Um, it's a block game and it's about the struggle on North Africa for the supply lines at the top. It does a very good representation of the struggles that were faced at that time as far as supply goes. Um, as you probably know, the Germans started from the left and the British started from the right and there was a struggle along this main supply line going uh, back and forth here which is represented by this main road here. There's also different types of supply lines that you can use which are uh, I would say reduced effectiveness just because the trails are smaller than the main highway so travel along those roads is slower and um, supply is often more difficult. So in the Vassal module here there's a little note that shows you that movement is plus four to movement and um, if you go along the tracks which are the dotted lines it's only plus two to movement and then trails are plus one to movement and off-road is zero. So if you look at the types of units that you have in the game there's only four types Recon can move at a speed of 4, Armor, Mechanized Infantry and such can move at a speed of 3, Motorized Infantry and Motorized AT can move at a speed of 2, and Infantry can move at a speed of 1. Now if you look moving along the highway, each one of those can get a plus 4 to the movement. If you're moving along the tracks, you get a plus 2, and if you move along the trails, it's a plus 1, and off-road. So basically, you can set up supply lines through these desert hexes with no trails or anything like that. But the problem is, uh, number one, it's very slow. And then number two, you have to have a supply line of each hex having connecting units in order to maintain supply to that unit. If one of those units is knocked out, you can put your other units out of supply. And that is the whole idea of the game. Um, combat and supply lines. Now there's one cool thing in here that's different than any other game I've seen. It's called the uh, supply cards. Now in order to do an action in the game you have to play a supply card in order to do that. Now 33 percent I believe of these cards are bluff cards and 66 percent of those are real cards. So the real card is a half moon and the other one is empty and you can play one two or three of these cards and if you want to put a bluff down and bluff your your opponent into thinking that you're doing something uh, that you're not um, that kind of fools him so uh, in order to explain to how that works I've downloaded a player aid off the geek which kind of explains how this work works so uh, the first thing that you do is you um, set up the scenario according to the scenario notes and you'll see that your units are t you are told where you can basically legally set up those units and that the access side gets six supply cards and some of those could be dummies or some couldn't and the very first turn of the game you're allowed to do a uh, mulligan which basically says you don't like your cards and you want to get a redeal so uh, what you're hoping for is a high number of supply cards and only a few dummies and even those dummies can be used effectively if you want to so at the end of the turn you will get two cards added to your supply deck so it gets tougher as the game goes so if you burn up all your supply cards it's going to be tougher later on for you so let's go into the sequence of play so the first thing that happens is the supply check so we check to see if units are in supply to their home base or to another unit that daisy chains them back to their home base those supply lines can be interrupted by a unit being destroyed and another moving Move, uh, an opponent moving in between you and your supply line and uh, knocking guys out of supply. So the next thing that happens is your turn options. So this is where you use those supply cards um, during your turn to uh, commit to an action. So each player gets the number of supply cards as denoted by his uh, scenario setup notes. And in this 1940 scenario, this the beginning, the German player gets six cards. So you see we have two dummies and four real ones here. It's our turn and we have to commit to a supply card. So these are the actions that we can take. We can do a basic move, an offensive move, an assault move, and a blitz move. 
So the German player, at this point, he's not really moved into to battle or doing anything just yet. So he's going to do a basic move, and he's going to lay one card down. And the opponent doesn't know what it is yet, but since it's just one card, it doesn't matter. He has to have a supply court card in order to uh, perform a move action. So he's going to move his units into here and do an attack. So what one supply card allows him to do is a basic turn type, which is a move and a battle. So now that we've done our movement, we reveal the card. And at this point, it's not going to really matter because, you know, we didn't do a two-card move. But there are different types of actions you can do or play two cards. You could do uh, a move, a move another unit, and then do a battle. Or you can do an assault, which is a move, a battle, and a battle. Or a blitz, which is a move, battle, move, battle. So let's say that I wanted to scare this guy into retreating out of here and I pretty much didn't have anything. I could lay two of these cards down like this and he wouldn't know what that second card is. Until after I did my move. Now the first thing he has to do when I move into his area is decide whether he wants to refuse battle or not. So he can stay and fight or um, he can run away. And if he's faster than me, he doesn't have to take any pursuit fire. So what's interesting about that is that if he thinks that I'm doing an offensive move or an assault move, which is a move, battle, battle, say I only moved one unit in there and I'd actually had used this, I could do a move, battle, battle and battle him twice. But I'm trying to scare him into retreating. And I'm going to use this... Um, So I've done my movement and I reveal my card. So now he knows it's just a basic move because I've only used one supply card. But uh, before I revealed my card, he had the chance to retreat. And he's going to go ahead and do that. And when he retreats from a battle or refuses a battle, he's marked as dis disrupted. And that means that um, he's disrupted. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that right now. Okay, so we did our movement, and we did our, our battle turn, and the non-moving player uh, elected to refuse battle, and so uh, there, there is no battle this turn. Uh, you check your supply, and that's pretty much it. Now it's the British player's turn uh, to do his actions. Now, he only gets two supply cards versus the German player getting six supply cards. So for this turn, he'll pass, and uh, he doesn't use any of his cards, but he does get a free withdrawal move. So if he decides he wants to withdraw these guys for free without using any supply cards to withdraw him from this area, he can back up if he wants to. So you'll notice these ridges do allow him not to, um, to cross those hexes like that. And these are, you have to watch these also. Okay, so let's talk about the different, um, I really like this chart a lot. So again, we're looking, if they move along the road, if he would withdrew along the road here, we could look at his unit type and see how fast he is, which is this one. Mechanized infantry is a speed of three. He could have gone back three, plus he's on the highway, which gives him a plus four to his movement. So that's how that works. Okay, so let's talk about battle next. So you'll notice that the if a circle with a uh, crosshair on it, if that target is in that battle, that unit has to attack that unit first. So if an armor is attacking a recon, he has to attack him before he can attack in infantry. So if an armor is attacking a recon, he gets a single fire. And a single fire just means he hits on a six. If an armor unit, if there are no armor present or recons, then he can attack these uh, other units. So a infantry is double fire, and that means he hits on a five or a six. If he's attacking artillery, that's triple fire. Now triple fire is a hit on a four, five, or six. So looking at the top of the unit shows you how many dice you roll 
And if we were having an attack like this, let's say we moved all these guys. Let's just do one for fun. We moved infantry into here. And he's going to be attacking that guy. All right, so we look at the chart. So the attacking unit is a uh, foot infantry, and he is attacking a mechanized infantry. So he would roll at single fire. He has to attack this guy. If there's another unit present he wants to attack, he has to get rid of that guy first. But since he's the attacker, since he's the attacker, the uh, defender gets to fire first. And so the defender is a mechanized infantry, and he has to attack against infantry first, which he is. He gets a single fire, and he would hit on a six. So we roll a die. I'm sorry, two dies. And that's one hit, and now he's step lost. And that takes effect immediately. And now uh, he gets to attack back, and he has two dice. And it's a miss, because it's still at single fire. So that goes, that's it for that turn. The fire marker uh, where they're battling stays right there. And those units stay locked in combat until one of them uh, runs out of supply cards or uh, withdraws from the battle. And uh, that's pretty, pretty much it. So the object of the game is to hold to Brook and its environs or preserve a superior army of this area remains uncontested. Capturing the enemy base wins the game immediately. So it looks like a simple game, but it's, you can really use all these supply lines to, uh, to get behind the enemy, cut off units, eliminate those units, uh, lock them up in the battle, and burning the supply cards. I mean, there, you really don't get that many. And you face a lot of decisions in the game as far as whether you want to uh, commit the supply supply cards, go into an attack, or uh, commit one supply card and fake the opponent and make them think that you're doing a, a double or a triple attack. Um, you could lay down one real card and two dummies if you wanted to, but uh, and the next turn you'll face yourself down with only three cards, all of them real supply cards, so you, if you lay three of them down you have to commit to a, a three supply card attack. Uh, so it, it's a pretty amazing game. Again, it's uh, only in comparison to Hammer of the Scots as far as uh, when you play it, you're like, oh my god, this is crazy. Um, but it's, it's a great game. I hope you get a chance to play it, and uh, happy gaming.